The Shyamalan essence is real and the ending of Split more than proves it. M. Night Shyamalan famously entered a massive slump in the aughts, following up his success on films like The Sixth Sense and Unbreakable with a series of critical duds. Following the outright failure of After Earth, however, Shyamalan made some course corrections. The director's 2015 film The Visit saw him take a step back, making a low-budget movie high on ideas. Shyamalan followed that project up with the well-reviewed Split, his most layered movie in well over a decade. Split, which is loosely inspired by a true story, follows three high school girls who are kidnapped after a birthday party and locked up by Kevin, a man, James McAvoy, with 23 distinct personalities hidden within him. Two of the darker personalities have taken over and hope to use the girls as part of a dark evolutionary plan, all focused on Anya Taylor-Joy's Casey. Shyamalan's movies always have complicated endings that leave viewers with boundless questions and lots to discuss and Split is one of his most complex. There's a drip feed of information about the main plot, a frankly haunting background to one of the main characters and, without a hint of hyperbole, arguably the best M. Night Shyamalan movie plot twist since The Sixth Sense. What was up with Kevin's personalities in Split? Kevin suffers from a fantastical form of dissociative identity disorder. McAvoy's main character is Kevin, a regular guy who, due to a series of traumatic childhood events, has created a string of alternative personalities, or alters, most of whom are mentally stronger than he was initially. In this world, dissociative identity disorder doesn't just lead to a psychological change, but also a physical one, Kevin can actually alter his body with each personality switch, meaning some personalities can have OCD and need glasses, while others need insulin shots. Who Kevin is at any given moment depends on who has stepped into the light in his mind, something typically controlled by the personality known as Barry. In the movie, the core personalities shown are Dennis, Patricia, Hedwig, and Barry. The former two, who call themselves the Horde, are the darker sides of Kevin, who have previously been pushed down by Barry and the rest but break out by manipulating the childlike Hedwig, who can take control of the light at will. Others try and break through to make a cry for help, but the Horde repeatedly pushes them back. It's important to note that while this is Kevin's body, his personality doesn't seem complicit in either side of this, when he finally does emerge, he begs to be killed, revealing that even though Barry and company are the good guys, they're still going against the original Alter's will. The Horde's plan is to unleash the beast, a mythical, at least in Kevin's psyche, 24th personality. It's only alluded to in the film, but it appears to be based on the animals in the zoo above where Kevin lives. In the third act, the beast breaks out thanks to Dennis and kills two of the kidnapped girls, but allows protagonist Casey to live due to her own troubled past, recognizing a bond between them. After this murder spree, Kevin appears to have reached a point where the Horde is in full control and can bring the indestructible beast out at will, making him an almost Jekyll and Hyde superhero. And, yes, superhero really is the word, as shown in the sequel, Glass. How Casey's past protected her from the beast in Split. Her trauma echoed in the Beast's shared memories. Split, 2017, Anya Taylor-Joy. While the film is ostensibly concerned with Kevin's past, the person whose backstory is elaborated on most explicitly is Casey's. She's introduced as the weird kid who's always on her own and constantly getting into trouble, only invited to the birthday party from which the girls were kidnapped out of pity. Despite these social defects, she shows a proactiveness and understanding of the dire situation that allows her to succeed where the others fail. The truth behind this, however, is rather haunting. In a series of flashbacks, audiences see her being taught to hunt by her father, at first assumed to be the cause of her skewed view of the world, but later revealed as context for the horrific abuse at the hands of her uncle. The film provides a chilling representation of pedophilia, the grooming scene, with the adult wanting to play animals is terrifying, as is the power the uncle wields even when held at gunpoint, and goes to great efforts to show how it affected Casey's life growing up. The story resolves itself with Casey finally finding the power to talk about her experiences, a decision in stark contrast to Kevin. Rather than letting a troubled past manifest, she chooses to deal with the problem, which ties directly into the film's core theme. It's a theme that continues on in the final movie in the trilogy, Glass.